So uh, we've, we should have this uh, YouTube channel, and what we want to do with it is upload a video. I don't have any at the moment, so when I'm looking at the dashboard, it's telling me upload a video. But once I've got a video, it'll give me those sorts of stats. So obviously, if you don't see stats, you don't you don't have a video yet. And so uh, you can either click the upload video button here, the blue one, or at the top right, you've always got that upload. So I'm going to click Upload at the top right corner. And from here we have actually several options. If you look on the right side, Import Videos. So if you've got, uh, this is most common like with an Android phone, you've got, you've got an Android phone which runs Android which is owned by Google. You've got a Gmail which is owned by Google. You've got Google Photos which is Google. You've got YouTube which is Google. All of this ecosystem together. So if you're recording video on your Google phone and it's saving to your Google Photos, you can use that to then import it from your Google Photos. You have the ability here also to start a live stream that requires the setup of having the hardware like the camera plugged in and such. But this is a system here where you can have these live broadcasts. People could comment, could watch live, and it'll be recorded for later playback. What you can also do from this upload screen is create videos based on a photo slideshow. So if you've got a bunch of photos that you ha have, you can put them together into a video slideshow. And then there's the video editor. This has a basic built-in video editor like Movie Maker, like iMovie. Uh, but the catch is you have to upload your videos first. And you're going to be pretty disappointed when it comes to YouTube is great, but the annoying part is uploading. You've got these videos, maybe dozens of megabytes large, maybe hundreds of megabytes large. And you're going to see that all of these internet companies that are selling you, Cox, AT&T, all of them, they're all terrible. They're all going to tell you, you're going to get such great speeds. They're not telling you upload speeds. All of these companies are going to sell you on the download speeds, and the upload speeds are often terrible. So here, in an educational institute, often we have the best internet, because we have great upload and download speeds. So our video is not that big, it'll take a moment to upload. But what I'm getting at is the video editor. If you're going to put together seven video clips, each of them is 20 megabytes, that's 140 megabytes to upload. And nowadays, 140 megabytes is not that big. I've got a flash drive right here that is uh, like 16 gigabytes, which is 16,000 megabytes. So 128 is not that much. But then you're gonna feel you're gonna feel how big that is once you try to upload it. So your upload speeds are really gonna vary. So this YouTube video editor, I don't use it very much because I have to wait simply to upload my videos. I've got Movie Maker on my computer right here. I'm ready to use it. I don't need the online one. There's an upload button here, but before that we've then got show your video public, unlisted, or private. And we'll see here types or we'll say um, uh, video attributes public, unlisted, and private. So this is anyone can watch and interact with it. And that word interact is what we've used before about liking your tweet, replying to your Facebook post, sharing your Pinterest pin interactions. If it's public, anyone can watch and interact and find it. Someone can search via Google. Someone can search in YouTube and they could find your video. It's completely public. Unlisted, anyone can watch and interact that has the link. I'll say here, you know, quotes that has the link uh, not found by a search. 
if someone searches YouTube for the exact name of my video, they're not going to find it if I set it to unlisted. It exists on YouTube, and if you share the link to the video, then people can watch it. Uh, so it's not that it's it's not that it doesn't exist on YouTube. It's that people need the direct link. And private is basically no one can watch or interact or find it. Actually, technically, you could share the link of your video. You have to approve who can watch your video. It's a very cumbersome process, however. I have to manually put in email addresses for people to be able to watch this, and I cannot upload a list of 20 emails. I have to do them one at a time. Question? Um, if it's unlisted, is it still visible on the channel? Okay. Hmm. I'm not or sure. Is it I think it's basically private, so um, can, you can, people can still access it. I'm not sure, you know, that's a funny thing, I haven't thought about that, but we'll check right now. We'll, I'll upload a video, we'll put it on the say, we'll, we'll see. Um, I'm sort of leaning toward that it won't be visible, because it's sort of in a way that it's private and public in the middle, in that a person has the link, they'll be able to watch it. But it's not that it's going to be floating around for people to find. We'll, we'll confirm that, but at least it's not found via search. Yes? You can choose or duplicate the chain of data. Yes, you can change between these anytime you want. So for, for us, you, you have to decide which of these do you want to do. If this is a test account, remember, I'm giving you a video of myself doing a review. That has nothing to do with your company. So what you can do, probably you'll want to do private. I'm going to leave mine on public, um, and we can change all of these, of course. So I'll leave it on public, I'll click that upload button, and the video that I gave you, you want to find, you want to find that video, it's the one called Tech Review Tuesday, Episode 4, Motorola Moto E, you're going to select your video, it's 1, point, it's one minute 22 seconds, click open on our particular computers again look at that it's uploading really fast that's nice on your home computer probably it'll upload much slower than that it has to upload and then it's going to be processed YouTube there's some crazy statistic that says every minute like people upload a hundred hours of YouTube content. So every minute people are uploading and uploading and uploading. And they're uploading legitimate things and illegitimate things. Illegitimate things basically are things that violate copyrights. And that's a whole can of worms there. But let's say you made a video about how to bake a pie. And you put in, for whatever reason, in the background, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. You don't own that, the rights to use that song. In that processing that YouTube did, YouTube uh, identified that song. The YouTube computers are very smart and they're gonna identify your song if it's in the if it's throughout the whole video, if it's in a portion of the video. I've had it just for testing purposes this thing YouTube tell me, oh you're using this copyrighted music. Well I wasn't actually using it, I was just recording it while I was talking and it's it's funny how it did it. But uh, the point is you're not going to use copyrighted music. YouTube will provide us with a lot of great music that we can work with. We'll get to that later. But some quick tips right here. Tips to avoid problems. Create your own content. Do not use copyrighted content like music. read up on fair use laws. So this is a can of worms, um, but basically I'm recommending all the time 
create your own stuff, record your own videos about your own products, your own business, etc. There's lots of channels out there. Probably the majority of channels out there are someone using someone else's content. And you say, well, how does that work? That goes against what I just said. Well, people create reviews of movies, let's say, and they show clips of the movie, but they're doing it in a fair use format. They're doing it for critique. And I'm not an expert in, in the law and all of that, but so I hesitate to tell you exactly what it is. That's why you need to read up on it. But fair use is I can use this content fairly. The, the use that I'm putting into it is that I'm reviewing it, I'm critiquing it, etc. It's a parody, uh, but really those things are really hammered out in a court of law, which is not free. So the short answer is your own content. And also avoiding copyrighted content, because you can find a lot of public domain content, copyright-free content, royalty-free content, and make your own videos based on that. You know, get that, get those photos from the 19th century um, that are in the public domain and make videos out of that. Fine. No one owns the copyright on, on that. But that's why I wrote this number one. Create your own content. Because YouTube, it's going to scan your video, that whole processing there, it's scanning your video, and it's better at finding audio content than video content. Uh, and so, if it finds that yours has copied someone else's video, it will send you an email, different things could happen. What happens if you violate the terms? Best case scenario, your video is unavailable in some countries. It's funny because uh, I've seen instances where a video is okay, people will be able to see it in the US, but not Germany, for example or it's available everywhere in the world except Japan. That's the best case scenario. A higher level, worst, your video is removed. Your video cannot be used on YouTube at all. It is has too many copyright violations. Worst, worst case. And then The worst case is not that somebody else can go and do that. No, I'm almost, I'm almost there. <laughs> worst, worstest case scenario is um, a channel is shut down. Maybe by lawyers. So they're not going to knock on your door, they're going to knock on your mailbox. Uh, so that, that happens. I was just, uh, in the last few days, there's a big YouTube channel out there, very popular, millions of views. They just got some lawyers after them. They, they, they created some parody videos against this other YouTube channel. That other YouTube channel didn't like it, and they got the lawyers on the original YouTube channel. And so it's like, everyone's making parody videos, but this one didn't like the parody, so... <coughs> time to get the lawyers involved. And oftentimes, unfortunately, in the US, we have these shakedown lawsuits. We have these lawsuits where we know we're not going to win, but we're still going to drag you into court because it's going to cost you $10,000 and we can afford $10,000. So again, to avoid all of this stuff, your own original content. And the funny thing is I've had, I've dealt with some of this because my company deals with a, with a few local businesses and one local business has been on TV, on the Travel Channel, for example, and the contract that that client had with the Travel Channel said, here is your video that we recorded of your, of your, um, of your restaurant. You can use it. We uploaded it to our YouTube channel, and a day later, YouTube sends us a letter that says, your video violates copyrights. Here's the example, your video and the original video. 
So then I have to go through the process of saying, hey YouTube, here's the contract, here's the contact information of the representatives, here's our proof, blah blah blah. They look into it a couple of days later and say, okay, great, and then it's, it's okay. But all of these networks really nowadays are more like guilty until proven innocent. They think there's a problem, well then you've got a problem until you, until you fix it. So we'll see in a moment to help you avoid this stuff because music is the one that gets everyone into trouble. I'm going to say uh, use the YouTube audio library. YouTube has a library of thousands of songs in a variety of genres and styles for you to use for free in YouTube. You have to pay nothing at all. So I could find a great cinematic score to add to my uh, tutorial, where I can add a really cool, funky uh, soundtrack, where I could get a jazz number, or I could get uh, some hip-hop uh, music out of the YouTube audio library and add it to my video, and I'm okay. They're giving it for free. We've uploaded our video. We've got a lot of little things to look at, a lot of little screens, uh, little sections to this screen. Uh, I see here there's basic info. It took the file name of my video and it put it there as a title. The file name of my video was Tech Review Tuesday, Episode 4, Motorola Moto E, and that's what I put into the title. I can change that, of course. But here's where we now have to start to think about the nuances of helping us to get found. We have to touch a little bit on concepts of SEO, search engine optimization. We're in YouTube, so it's not technically SEO, it's YEO. YouTube engine optimization. YouTube has a built-in kind of search engine just like Twitter, just like Facebook, etc. And so this is where I have to think about what are people searching for? And this is the chicken or the egg. Which do I do? Do I develop a series of keywords to then create videos? Or do I create a video and then think about keywords or research keywords to add to it? In our case we have to start the way that we've got a video, let's develop keywords for it. It's already sort of done in this example in that I have Tech Review Tuesday, Episode 4 of Motorola E. But it's not the best title because no one knows that I've got a series of videos or a channel called Tech Review Tuesday. No one knows that that exists. So why would they be searching for that, really? They're going to be searching for Motorola Moto E. Are they going to search for Moto E? So here, this is not, in our case, is not the best title. Because if I simply switch it around like this, the main keywords first are Motorola Moto E. People are going to search for that. Secondary is my Tech Review Tuesday company or channel or concept, episode 4. This is still not good enough because it's taking up all of this space in stuff that to a lot of degree is not necessary. My branding is not necessary here. My branding will go in the description. That's where I can write a lot. Put it here for a moment. People are going to be searching this keyword. That's not a good title either. This video is about talking about this particular smartphone that is very affordable. So I could say something like the affordable Motorola Moto E. People might be searching for that. This sort of defeats that purpose. They know that it's affordable. Okay, what is an affordable smartphone? That's a totally legitimate title. It's about the video. I'm not saying here make up a title and description that has nothing to do with your video. That's going to be problematic because when people then search that those keywords, find your video, your video's not about that, they're going to give you thumbs down. 
you can get thumbs up, thumbs down. And thumbs down, videos that get thumbs down are not going to rank and be viewed very well because people hate them. So what if I do this? The best affordable smartphone Moto E. They may be searching for Moto E, or more likely, perhaps, they're for searching for affordable smartphone. The best affordable smartphone. What about the best affordable smartphone 2016? Because there was a great one last year and two years ago, but I want one for this year. So this title here is your first chance to make it to make that first impression. Is the only chance for you to make that first impression. A little segue here. I'm going to go back to YouTube main screen and I'm going to start to type the best smart before I'm even done talking typing. YouTube is giving me suggestions. The best smartphone in the world 2016 top suggestion. Maybe if it applies, I can use that. The best smartphone, 2016, 2015. The best smartphone today. The best smartphone you can buy. I'm doing research. This is what is popping up when people search. So maybe this one, the best smartphone in the world, 2016. I'm also putting in the name of the individual product. I'm getting this sort of like keyword that is a trend. I'm adding it to my title, putting in the further just further keyword of Moto E. So my my channel, you know, it's Tech Review Tuesday. Every Tuesday I'm going to upload a video about reviewing technology. That's why it's not that important for me to promote the name of my channel right in the title. I have more space here in the description. I forgot to show, but I already had it automatically display an address here. Let's say here now you have this space to write whatever you want. And if you write a web address, it will become an active link so the example that I have here is um, I could put in my description get 10% off your next purchase and I have a and I have a link here I have a landing page that I created on my website that will become active when people view the video, that'll be a, a, a link they can click on, on desktop, on mobile. And it'll go to that website where they'll get 10% off. So great, I've got this video to show off this smartphone, but I'm also using it to my advantage to perhaps get profit a little bit off of it. And I can write as much as I want here, basically. You know, I can write a huge amount of content. The problem is that um, I went to this I went to the results. I, I searched best smartphone in the world. Look at the results. It says the number one here, 2015 and 16 top 10 best smartphones. It didn't actually say in the world in the title. The second place one, which said literally the best smartphone in the world, is second place. The five best smartphones to buy in 2016, top 10 smartphones coming 2016, etc. These go on two weeks ago, four months ago, one month ago. And all of these have to then a description top 10 best smartphones, 7 futuristic gadgets, is the Samsung Galaxy S7 the best smartphone in the world right now? Objectively, yes. What do you think? And then on here. Here are the best 5 smartphones from Mobile World Congress, February 2016. These devices are newly announced in MWC dot dot dot. It cuts off at a certain point. 
you can write a whole essay here if you want, but it gets cut off eventually, basically after the third line. So if I don't have the most important words early on, they're going to get cut off. So I do want to show that coupon, that promo there, but maybe not the first thing. Maybe here I want to say, are you on a budget? Take a look at the Motorola Moto E, the best money can buy. If I go look at a video, notice here, three lines, show more. Look at how much more there is here. Go look at another video, three lines, show more. There's a population of people that are never going to know that or never going to click that. So the most important thing then needs to be within the first three lines. You can put plenty more here. One, <clears throat> one trick <clears throat> that I've seen that I think is useful is people sometimes make it obvious they say like this. They say click show more. One, two, three lines, fourth line. So in that area there, it'll just say, click show more. That'll stand out, and people might click show more, where it's more to view. Some people will not see that. Some people will not click, sure, but it doesn't hurt to try. Because here, you've got this whole area where you can add so much findable content. Yes? It will become a hyperlink once we publish it. Yeah, definitely. More than one. Say that again? If it's a good call to action, yes. If it's simply like, you know, follow us on our website. Well, why? But if I've got here, like this CTA, get 10% off on your next purchase. So if I'm active and telling people what's in it for them to click, like here like this video? Subscribe for more. Link. Join us on social media. Link. So I'm going to say just for some, well I'll write it on my notes over here actually, uh, in the description. I'll say description tips. Only the first Three lines will show up before read more. Perhaps entice people to click read more. Perhaps include links. So back links to your site. social media, whatever. You can put links. I don't believe there's a limit to them, but at a certain point you look like a spammer. You've got seven links there. So a little bit more conservatively, I would say one to three links. If you can get your message across in one link, that's all you need. Three links, pushing it a little bit, four links, getting into spam territory, seven links, you're a spammer. I'm going to ignore them. Not for everyone, of course, but think about your own 
habits when you see tweets or YouTube videos or blog posts or stuff. What feels spammy to you? Think about it objectively. And oftentimes it's too much. Too much links, too much tags, too much hashtags. That's often spammy behavior and we're getting numb to it. Uh, optional hashtags. You can add hashtags to YouTube. They behave like other networks, so they become active search links. Uh, I don't I don't have anyone to show you at the moment. I don't see them as much as you would think. Ha hashtags are available on YouTube, but I don't see them as much. And the point of what they do or how they work is that you will see, uh, let's say, hashtag LGG5. That's a hashtag. It'll be an active link. A person can click on it, and what will happen is it will search up here on YouTube everything that is that has LGG5. So what good is that to you? Well, if it's your hashtag about your company and such, it's very useful because then all your videos are tied together with your hashtag. But if I simply hashtag it, if I'm reviewing the Motorola and I hashtag it Motorola, well, every video about Motorola will show up. And mine is going to get lost in the crowd. So hashtags become active search links. Just to show you what it looks like, I will add the hashtag. Hashtag tech review Tuesday. And hashtags have no spaces. You can put capital letters and numbers if you want. But that will create a searchable link that whenever someone clicks on that, every video with that tag will show up on their search. Probably nothing will show up, so I'll just also put Motorola. This is different than the tags down here. We'll get to that in a moment. <coughs> but these are active links that will appear in the description. Have you seen videos where this is a video that I made for a company about finance investing and it's uh, 23 minutes long and it's top five investing tips for beginners and I'd love to watch the whole thing, but I don't have 23 minutes. Look at how I wrote the description. There's a little bit of intro. Show more. Chapters. Jump directly to tip number four. Tip number one. Read the disclaimer. You can do that to your videos of any length. Obviously it makes more sense to longer videos. But you can have active links to jump anywhere you want. And the way you do that is simply include a time code. This video is 23 minutes long. We have minutes and seconds. At 0 minutes, 7 seconds is the intro. At 0 minutes, 55 seconds is tip 5. At 15 minutes, 40 seconds is tip 1. So for you to do this, simple. You somehow tell people, like, I wrote chapters. What else could you call these? Chapters, sections, um, whatever word for that. But this is a one minute, one and a half minutes. Let's say uh, zero minutes, uh, 15 seconds has, um, you know, hello. And then at zero minutes, 55 seconds is hardware. And at one minute, don't forget the, the trailing zero there, or else it might be 10 minutes. At one minute, um, 15 seconds is software. 
and I'm not sure what happens if you put it too far ahead, let's say at 12 minutes, 33. There's obviously no 12 minutes here, but I don't think that'll do anything. Once we publish this, these will become active. There's nothing else you need to do. Just put a time code. You need to know beforehand where in your video you want to direct people to. As you play your video, if you, you, know, if you simply double-click your video to watch it, it'll start telling you right here, your, there's your time code. 26 seconds. So I write that in my description. 00, zero colon 26. And that will be an active link. Like the example here. Yes, I am giving away the whole thing here. There's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But what does invest in BN, BN, BYN mean? I still want people to watch that. I'm not giving away the whole video. It's not that people will then, okay, I saw that, I'm done. No, oh, they'll still watch it. They'll click there to jump there. 638 views. Obviously not superstar YouTube number of views, but if I'm, if I'm starting this channel, we started it in January, and it's been getting attention. It's been getting views. It's been creating some revenue and traffic to the original site. So you measure your success your way. 638 views is great. This had zero when it was published on January. And uh, look at that special offer. There's a link there that says click here for a special offer. Follow that link. You can put different active links. Why would they click? Well, there's a special offer. Yes, if it is, oh, if it is an affiliate link, you should be pretty up upfront about it. Um, not really on a legal sense, but that those terms that we agreed to for YouTube buried in there is going to tell you, like. Uh, show your content honestly, and that's basically, well, if you've got affiliate links, just write it that's an affiliate. You don't have to give a big explanation, an essay about it, just say that's an affiliate link. So we can write here, optional. time codes to let people jump through your video. It's simply, you know, 0025 or 12 minutes, 5 seconds, whatever. Um, you can upload really long videos. I've uploaded a three hour long video. It took a long time just to upload it because again, upload speeds are terrible. So then at that point you're going to be putting one hour, uh, 22 minutes, 17 seconds. The time code. Just add it to your description and it'll become active. Just looking randomly here, Fortune Magazine on, on their short view right here, the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett talks 2016 election, his acquisition of position cast parts, an activist investor. Okay, that might be enough, that might be all that I need. If I'm interested, I might click show more. Some people will not, uh, will not click, sure, but if they click, what else will you see? Subscribe to Fortune. So there's some sort of subscription Oh, that's subscription YouTube, not subscription magazine. Fortune is a global leader in business journalism with a worldwide circulation of more than a million. There's a little biography that they wrote into this video that is generic to all their videos, but it's full of keywords. Fortune 500. Um, 
Fortune annual conference, business journalism. So that's serving the purpose of being those keywords when people search. It definitely has. Uh, I don't know, like the exact rankings of them all. I think that's a trade secret for YouTube. They all have a value, so take advantage of that title, the description, and we'll get to tags in a moment. But take advantage of all of it. It's it's there available for us. We we might as well use it. Further, they have some links. Here's our website web address. Here's our Facebook. They're promoting their Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. That is acceptable. You can cross promote. You can do some content maybe once a month. I'm going to upload a YouTube video. But every week I'm going to tweet. That's perfectly fine. So that's a description area. Below that we have a spot for tags. This is different than the hashtags. These are not active clickable links, but these are words and phrases that will help you get found. Tags. For example, Albert Einstein, comma, flying pig, comma, mashup. You want to write these keywords, put a comma between them. So let's say I, I write, doesn't matter capitalization, review, comma, testimonial, comma, what is my video about? I'm reviewing it, I'm giving a testimonial. This is the Motorola Moto E, comma, that's a keyword there. Uh, I could put best smartphone, comma. And obviously if I want to remove tags, I can click the X next to them, and I can put a whole bunch here. Keywords are not visible by default, but they help you get found. So just clicking here, 10 amazing inventions available now, 177,000 views, very small, short description, it's simply latest video. Show more and look at all of this, 10 magnet tips, 6, oh this is, uh, this is the top 10s right here. So they, in, in this case here, they've listed they would have been better to also put the time code, but they've listed all of the 10 inventions and then a link to go buy it. They might have some sort of partnership or affiliate, which they didn't quite divulge. Get the best offers and discounts on Amazon. Well, it's probably the affiliate link. Go get that Nexus. Follow our link. Like what you see, want more? Subscribe. And a link back to their main YouTube channel. Use their other social media. The next item down here is the video thumbnail. Now, YouTube used to let you browse your video to pick the perfect thumbnail. Now, it gives you one of three, it gives you three randomly generated thumbnails, somewhere in the beginning of your video, somewhere at the end, and in the middle. Perhaps one of these works well. It chose the one in the middle for me, actually. That's the thumbnail that's going to appear for people when they find, when they see thumbnails in YouTube. In my case, it might not be the best one. My eyes are half closed. Can't quite see it, but it's not the best picture. Maybe I want this one right here because it happened to catch the title screen. And so that one might be a good one, so I can select that one. And you can change these whenever you want, but see, now that's going to appear. I'll show you in a moment, there's a fourth option. I don't have mine active yet, and you will not have it active until you do what I'm about to show you in a moment. You're going to have <coughs> the fourth option to upload your own custom thumbnail. That's the one I highly recommend you do. Don't try to get one of those random spots. Create your own custom thumbnail. use a custom thumbnail. 
size is 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels. That's basically an HD TV screen. This is a tiny thumbnail, but it still can come from that size because this video can be shown on a desktop, laptop, mobile device, on a TV. People have smart TVs with YouTube built in. So you want a custom thumbnail of those dimensions. And that's something you, that you need to create in Photoshop or, or Illustrator or Microsoft Paint, you know, some graphics software. When you make these thumbnails, you want to avoid... Let me show an example over here. Okay, so if you look at... Uh, these three thumbnails here, I see a problem with them these first three ones. Do you? Oh, let's compare also for the top one there. There's four right there. One of them is a good one. Three of them could be better. Top one on, the one on the top is the better one. What is wrong or what is different? Well, three of them have a talking head. What's different? The text. The text is nice and big. The three most important rules of something. Text is really nice and readable on that one. Cannot read that, cannot read that, cannot read that. Well, on the bottom one, a little. You can kind of read it. Tony Robbins something, something. The trick here is if you're going to use text in your thumbnail, you have to make it big. That's a little thumbnail, but when it's 1920 by 1080, a lot of the space is being used by the text. And it's up to you how you're going to make your your thumbnails, of course, what's eye-catching and appealing. But if you're going to use text, make it big. This one right here, they're, they're not so good. And also, you want to avoid putting text near the bottom right of the thumbnail. Why? The time, the clock is covering it. The three most important rules of what? I can't read it. Oh, investing. <clears throat> so, on the thumbnail tips. Um, if you add text, make it big. Make it contrast. The top one and the bottom one both have white text. The one on the bottom is hard to read because some of the white text is on a white shirt. Some of the white text is on a black shirt. That's easy to read. White on white is hard to read. White on black is easy to read. Light on dark, dark on light, contrast. White text on a dark background for the top one, but they also put in a little edge around it, a little black edge. That's often a great way to fix this. This would have been fixed if they simply put a white, I mean a black border around the white text. That, that would create the readable, the readability and the contrast. So I'm surprised here. Casa Palmera paid to be, view, to be viewed more. It says right there, and they paid some amount. And that thumb, thumbnail is, is not that good. So they've got 5,000 views, but the little nuances help you also. If you add text, make it big, make it contrasty, and uh, avoid text at the bottom right corner. It's going to get covered off, covered, covered up by the timestamp. The length of the video is going to get covered up down there.
circumstances that you mentioned? Not quite, um, because it's relative. If you look at it here, that looks like 10-point text. But when you're de designing it in, in Photoshop, it was probably 100-point. So I would recommend starting off <coughs> at 72-point size text, but uh, depending on how much you write, that might be too small or too big. So just eyeball it so that it gets big enough. And one thing that I like to do, I, I design these things in Photoshop and then I zoom out because I've got it nice and big on my monitor. But then I zoom it out really small to about this size. That's usually about 8% view. And if I can still read the text when I'm zoomed out, then it's good text, good sized. On the right side, then, we've got public, private, or unlisted. So you can jump between them. Since I've got mine on public, it will also let me share this directly to Google Plus and Twitter. So if I activate that, it'll ask me to log into Twitter. I won't do that right now. If I activate Google Plus, it'll go to Google Plus. This is when it's public. Notice I can't do that on unlisted because it's hidden. And I can't do that on private because it's even more hidden that. But if I leave it on public and I'm saying something like, I'm going to send it off to Twitter, so I activate the Twitter link and I will say, uh, all the personal finance you need, all the personal finance advice, hashtag advice you need <coughs> in about 23 minutes. Activate Twitter. This is going to be, that text that I wrote right there will be sh sent over only to Twitter. So in those 140 characters that I have to think about, that's, uh, that's what will be sent out. If I've got it on unlisted, no one can see it unless they have the link. The link to your video is right there on the left. Your video will be live at that address. That address is case sensitive and just gibberish. So, if you're trying to remember that from memory to send it, is that a capital X or a lowercase X or is that an I or a capital I, lowercase? In private, no one will see it unless you do share and then here. You enter email addresses. And they're going to get an email. This is who you're approving. You have to approve via email. Again, it's not that uh, convenient. And below that, we've got playlists. I've already got a few here that I created, but what a playlist is is like a folder to organize, to group your videos. So if I've created a playlist previously, all I need to do is just select here. This, this video is getting saved to the Tech Review Tuesday playlist. And I can put a video into more than one playlist. That's fine. Or no playlists. The point of... Uh, the point... of getting the, um, of using the playlist is like, in the videos that I upload for this class, I'm using one channel. And I've uploaded lots of videos here from lots of classes. And a person can go to my channel here and see every video from every class all jumbled up. Or they can go to the playlists and only look at the videos from the social media class. If someone goes to a particular playlist, they will see all of those videos.
So uh, if I put things into a playlist, people will see all of the videos, so they're a sequence. They're all together. Better yet, someone watches one, the next one in the sequence then appears. All right, so for our first day of class, of social media for your business, videos, the network we're going to focus on today is Twitter. We have many networks to talk about, many so networks to choose from. from and you may third, decide to ABC. focus on one or may two or tenth. all of them. ABC. And I'm going to talk about... So it is valuable to use playlists, especially if you've got a variety of topics, because these are also keywords. If I'm creating playlists, I can create one here. Create a playlist. We'll call it Phone Reviews. Create. So now this video is part of that playlist. And when people search that keyword, they could find my video. Playlist tips. Use them to get found because of keywords in the title. Uh, the playlists also have descriptions. You see that on another screen. Uh, so you can get found that way. You also group videos together. Can put a video into multiple lists. And then keeps people watching your videos instead of others. Others videos. Your videos will be grouped together. Someone watches one, the next one comes up. Any questions on this screen? This is the basic info screen. Translations. I wrote all of this in English, but if I go to translations, I can set it up to then also be in Spanish. Uh, Tagalog, Japanese, Hebrew, etc. It doesn't do it for me, though. I have to provide the text. But they will sell you a translation. Or you could do it the long way and go off to Google Translate, put your text in there, and copy it from there to here. But the machine is often not that good, and the words will not come out as, as best as they could. And this is, again, to be found more. If I made a video where I'm not really speaking, any language could watch my video. Well, it behooves me to make a translation of a different language so that they can find my video. Advanced settings. Take a quick look here. The very first item here is the default for YouTube is let any crazy person write any crazy thing on your video or any good person write any good thing on your video. Allow comments? Well, okay, I don't want anyone. My, my, my video is, is, is going to cause a lot of controversy, so I'll turn off comments. But as I've said previously, I recommend you run social media as a dialogue rather than a monologue. Let there be a back and forth discussion. The way to mitigate problems, instead of letting every comment appear automatically, Approve a comment before it appears. Over on your Creator Studio community, all the comments will be will show up there until you approve them. You can approve them, you can trash them, you can mark the person as a spammer. And that's what I recommend. Let people comment, but the comment won't appear, appear till you approve it to really focus your message. Yes? Um, honestly, if you, it's perfectly fine to have a to have a to have a thin skin. If someone says any negative thing, 
delete it. It's perfectly fine. Uh, because it's your content, it's your brand, it's your property, it's your vision, it's, it's up to you. The, these arguments about you're, Im, you're Im, impugning my free speech, it doesn't apply here. This is my content, this is my product, this is my brand, this is my channel. Like in the real world, any crazy person can yell at me if they're on my front lawn no, get off my property and yell at me on the sidewalk. There's your free speech. On my property, in my house, don't yell at me, it's my property. Same thing here. It's my channel. You want to yell at me and be controversial? Create your own channel and say whatever you want. But here, because I want to really focus my message, I can remove any negativity in any level I want. They wrote, a, they wrote 10 positive things and then they wrote one sad face, I can delete that. Whatever, it's my mind to do so. It is more work here because now I need to be a moderator. If I have a very popular channel, I'm going to see here in my dashboard, <coughs> community, held for review, a number that says there's seven things you need to approve, 12 things, 40 things, 100 things. That's a good problem to have, perhaps. But it's going to be better to keep people on track because positivity beats positivity. And negativ negativity does the same. Everyone's negative on comments, well, you're going to get more negative comments. It could be telling you your video has a problem, but it's, again, it's just opinions. Everything else here by these defaults are just fine. One thing that trips people up is about captions. If you've got captions on your video, you should select one of these items, and I myself still think they're all a little murky, but most likely you're going to select the option this content has never aired on television in the US. Uh, I created this video to upload to YouTube. It's never been on TV, so I'll choose that. Well, what if I did have some video studio create a commercial for me and it ran for a month on NBC? Okay, well I'm uploading it to YouTube but was that video captioned or not? This content is only aired on television in the US without captions. Captions are the subtitles at the bottom of the video. And oftentimes a commercial doesn't have captions. That's there. Was your video on TV but before 2012? Again, all of this stuff here, I myself am not an expert on this, but usually the best one is going to be the first one. I created this for YouTube, it hasn't aired on TV. Besides that, I don't quite have a best answer for you. You look at it yourself and see what makes sense. Allow people to embed your video, meaning would you like people to share your video on their website? And you might say, no, I don't want them to steal my video. Actually, yes, you do want them to steal your video, and it's not really stealing. Your video will appear on their site, and it's still going to be linked back to your YouTube channel. So. That'll bring me traffic back to my YouTube. They cannot remove, remove that link. It's built into to YouTube, basically. So yeah, let my video show up in more places. Subs if I get subscribers, followers, let them know. Victor's Tech Reviews uploaded a new video. So they come to watch the video. Age restriction, that should make sense. If your video is, you know, for 18 and up, you should activate that. Content de declaration, if you've got a paid product placement, not just an affiliate link, that's that's different. If you've done, done your video and in the middle of the video you say, yeah, don't forget to buy miracle Grow food, it's the best. Well, you are paid for that to show that off, so you should declare that. Um, everything else here, defaults is fine, what's your language, category. Not a lot of categories to choose from, I think they should revamp these, but I don't think there's much of a weight to this for you to get found. It's going to be more about your title, your description, your tags. Because if I put it into sports, that's so nebulous. Football, lacrosse, water polo, uh, badminton, cricket, what kind of sport? There's just so many sports out there. So pick whatever kind of works, and it's really limited because this is my tech review. 
uh, my tech review series. Which of the... I don't see tech here. I had right there. Science and technology. I didn't even see it. I saw science. Science and technology. But a common one often to choose is entertainment. Well, maybe this is my blog. People in blogs. So I did mention everything here, but it's pretty self-explanatory. And if it doesn't, you can click learn more. But any questions on this screen? Advanced. So a lot of nuances to talk about here and the optimization. We'll talk a little more optimization in just a moment, but I'm ready to publish it. Again, depending on your channel, choose public, unlisted, or private. I'll make mine public and I'll publish it. My video is available on uh, YouTube now. Anyone can see it. Anyone can see my, my video now. And from here, I could further share it to Pinterest, Facebook, etc. There's the link. I could email it to people. Embed it, there's the code. Uh, I could copy that code, paste it onto my website. And then my video could show up on my website from YouTube. Yes. That's on the top right corner. There should be a button that says No, this is just a uh, best practice in terms of uh, of proper grammar. Um, you know, the colon is to show that this is the item we're talking about. So there's really no trick here, anything regarding you know SEO or anything like that. It's just for proper grammar. I'm pretty sure YouTube is just going to ignore that. It, it's gonna, it's going to ignore the special characters. It's going to look at the words. If we choose embed, the cool thing that we can do with that is that within your particular, uh, on your blog, you could have a video on your blog like this. YouTube is hosting the video, not your website. And all you need to for that is that you've got that embed code. Now, whatever we were looking at this screen, go ahead and click on your icon on the top right corner and go to Creator Studio. Under Creator Studio here, now I've got a video, some quick stats, <coughs> views, comments, likes, dislikes. I can go back to edit the video. If I want to change the description, change the keywords, add to them, I can always go back to edit. Drop down menu lets you go directly to those different items, subtitles, and all of that. You see here that I have some views for the video from last week. Um, let me mention a few more tips to get views because there's views to be had from the description and all of that, but then there's a little bit more of an aggressive way to do it, which I'll show you now. Um, let's practice with this. Uh, you have search at the top. Just like Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, all of these networks have search. People are searching for stuff. People are searching for tweets, for pins, for videos on their respective channels. I want to get more views to, for my video about the Motorola Moto E. So I'm going to... Here's more tips for views. I'm going to piggyback on popular videos. 
I'm going to jump on another video that is popular for me to get some views. Now this has pros and cons, of course, but let me show you how it works. I've got a video about the Motorola Moto E, so I'm simply going to search for Moto E, whichever one of these. I'm going to choose, uh, I don't know, the, the first one here. I've searched a keyword about what my video is, and I get 52,000 results. The first result is the Motorola Moto E second generation unboxing and review from one year ago. 356,000 views. Another one here, 40,000. Another one, 275. The tactic is, I look at all of these videos that have views. I'm going to select any one of them. I'm going to select the first one, Motorola Moto E, from Detroit Borg. I'm going to click on that one. It's a video, 17 minutes long. What I'm then going to do is this particular video has the ability to comment. Most comment, most videos have the ability to comment. So what I'm going to do, this is getting lots of views. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to comment. Well, I, I need a little bit here. I need it to have the link of my video first. Because I, I can paste in my... my video, the link of my video. I can put my, my link in there, and that will become an active link. The link to my video becomes an active link on their comment of this video that's getting a lot of views. Now this, literally right here, is spam. Simply me putting my link like that, that's spam. The, the person, Detroit Borg, gets a notification that says, Victor's Tech commented on your video. They can choose to ignore it and leave it, or delete it. As I said, you can delete any comment. This, what I wrote, is spam. A better way to, be, to write this is, let's assume I watch the video and I say something leading with positivity. Great video. Um, we agree that the Moto E, blah, 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 blah. Give them a little sugar first. And then say, our take is, and then our link to our video. Now it's not spam. I'm contributing to the conversation because spam doesn't contribute anything. This contributes in that we're being positive. We are on their side and saying why it's so good. And then a little stealthily, our own video. Our video of the Moto related to their video of the Moto. I'm not going to go to, you know, the, 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 the White House puts the president's speeches on YouTube. I'm not going to go to the president's speech and put my link about my Motorola phone there. Completely irrelevant. It's going to get deleted or marked as spam. And if I get a lot of those strikes against my channel, I get shut down. So I'm going to think about how I can insert myself into the popularity of this video. And it doesn't always work, but I'm showing you here from this test account, it works. Look at that traffic. This account has no followers yet, but has some traffic. I created it a week ago. Yes, eight views is not a lot, but you have to start from somewhere. And so my post here, and you can do this if you want, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to click post. And now my comment went on to this one with the rest of the 657 comments. And that could get me traffic. So I'm saying here, piggyback on popular videos. The steps are. Search keywords of your own video, videos, view popular 
videos. Comment and link your video or videos or your channel or your playlist or your website, whatever, because they're active links. Comment and link your video, but be careful here, 3A. Uh, be on topic. Be positive. And uh, 3C, contribute. Don't just say, hey me, hey everyone, look at me, watch my video. Uh, contribute to the comment. Yes, the analytics is pretty detailed because it'll tell you where it's coming from. You see here, there's all of these ways to parse the data, such as where's your traffic source and devices and everything, and it'll, go, it'll break it down in pretty detailed. Related to this method, I'm going to say also piggyback on the popular comments of popular videos. It's similar to the same steps. The way that one works is I'll randomly jump over here to uh, Moto E one week. Okay, 275,000 views. The default behavior even though a moment ago you saw that I commented and it went to the top, that's not true. What's actually at the top, if I refreshed the screen, it would put my comment actually much lower down. Because the default behavior when you upload a video nowadays is show the top comments first. See this? So the top comment will show up first. Top comment means someone commented and someone gave it a thumbs up or thumbs down. This is that 633.39 thumbs up. So this one is risen to the top. This comment is more popular than the other comments. So this is a popular comment on a popular video. This is what I'm going to do is I'm going to reply here. I'm going to reply to who has written a comment because then now my comment will be attached to a popular comment that is near the top. If I simply add a comment here, not directed to anyone in particular, that's going to be shuffled in here somewhere. One month ago is higher than three days ago. One week ago, one month ago, one week ago. See, that's kind of random-ish. But the popular comments, the, one that, the ones that have been marked by the community as popular, will rise. So, tried something a little different with this one. What do you guys think? More videos? Now, this assumes I watched the video. What different it was, but I'm going to fake it. I'm going to click reply, and what happens is my comment is attached to that comment, which will make it higher. And I'll say again, lead with positivity. Yeah, great. We enjoyed your new direction. It really lightens up the reviews. beg to differ on your point about specs, though. And then a link to my video. Worst case scenario, nothing happens. Best case scenario, I get a view. Austin Evans clicks my video to watch my, my video. And from there, they may then close it or add a comment or reply or subscribe. All of those actions that we're trying to get from every network. I want to get followers on Twitter. I want to get likes on Facebook. I want to get comments on Pinterest. I want to get all of that also on YouTube. So everything we talked about on a previous network also applies here with twists. So I'm being positive. I'm being on topic. I'm adding a link. I'll click reply. Now my comment here will be near the top of the BMC test. Instead of it being pushed down 
somewhere off on this one. So I gave the handout earlier about what kind of videos to create, six of them. Uh, I would recommend to look at those, follow those links, see those examples, see more examples along those lines, and figure out, I want to try to do videos like number two. I want to try videos like number six. And you're able to mix and match. Do this month do a video like of number two, and next month do a video of number one like number one, because for basically for Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and uh, Pinterest and all of them, you should try to at least, to use it at least once a week, one time per week, at least. The more you tweet, the more you pin, etc., the more content gets put out there to get found. It's much harder on YouTube to be weekly. So for YouTube, it's perfectly fine once a month. Once a month, a new video. You might say, I can't make a five minute video every month. I'm not asking five minutes, 30 seconds. 45 seconds, 20 minutes, whatever, any amount of length of a video, I would sort of recommend, however, at least 30 seconds and up. You can do plenty in 30 seconds. You could do the, you could do the social media tip of the day. I'm a web design company. I want to put social media videos out there. So I put my phone here and I record myself. Hey everyone, today's tip is on Twitter. Don't forget to put hashtag. See you next time. That's it. Maybe I don't have any great production values on it, but I'm putting content. And as I get better at this, I'll improve it. Yes? I would double down on it once one of the once it seems that one of these is kind of working right. try to do more of that but I personally have seen for clients it's kind of hard to pin it down uh, until you try as many of them, and then check your analytics. Test, test, test. test it for a while, and then once you've developed, it looks like this is working, it looks like my screen capture tutorials are working really well, follow up more on that. So here's an example from our own company. So we're a web design company and all of that, and on our videos, we've got these videos, and we also make apps. So here's a few commercials for some of our apps. Okay, 96 views, 106 views. Here's one about food staging, 45 views. Here's one about how to use the social network, Peach, 1,500 views. That one's doing well, better compared to those. And then look at this one. Build an Android app, 41,000 views. Do you track the lead acquisition back to the user as in the product from start to finish and we're able to identify? Yeah, because we've got Google Analytics set up, and then that'll tell us where all our traffic is coming from back to the website. Um, so definitely keep track of that, because if you're trying to get active on YouTube and Twitter, how do you know which one to spend more of your time? Because I have limited time and budget. So we do try a little of everything. And again, some of these other ones are much more polished and professional, and then that one was a bigger hit. This one, I look at it now and I cringe. I didn't use a very good microphone on that one, but people have loved it. It's gone to 41,000 views on that, even though now that I hear it myself, and I'm like, that's a terrible microphone. Why didn't I use the good one? And then 
Is there any way you can replace that with the open key with view cap? No, no. <laughs> I wish YouTube would let you do that, but it's basically the views are attached to the video, and if you remove the video, you remove all of that. So here are the keywords. Build an Android app. People can search for that. Visual Studio 13, 2018. Build an app in five minutes. And yes, 130 people love it. Thumbs up. 20,000, I mean 20, don't. And it's not literally that you'll create the next Facebook in five minutes. This is the, here's the tools, the software, get up and running, see how easy it is. You start with the software, you're going to do this, and then eventually you are going to put together some form of, of project, some form of app, and then you will run it on a real device. Uh, it's not just theoretical. Um, and then what's happened on this one has got 50 comments also. That's another measure of the popularity of this video. This video has, has become a sort of tech support. People are asking, well, it's this is not working for me, this is not working for, for me, this is not active, what do I do? This is, again, the dialogue of social media. This is more work. I do get these notifications about new uh, new uh, comments, people asking, I'm trying to do this, but it doesn't work. What do I do? And then I go in and I answer it. That's above and beyond. But that's creating people that then subscribe. And this channel, when this channel was set up, this video was added in September. At that time, there were probably two subscribers to the channel. And now there's 154 building and building and building on top of itself. And then again, there's, there's more to talk about as we're winding down in the day. Any questions on some things and quick answers for me to give you? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, anything from your experience that uh, now you have a successful video like this, they don't like literally translate them to, no. to a subscription, right? No. Is there some kind of content that uh, is more likely to turn into a subscription of a user? Is it more, for example, for me, it would make sense that if you have a channel and you have a series, a consistent series of like, like let's say, a whiteboard Wednesday. Whiteboard Wednesday, but this Whiteboard Wednesday is like really good and really um, valuable. Then I think people might be more likely to subscribe, right? If they're so consistent. <coughs> it's still about all the content. Yes, 41,000 views have not resulted in 41,000 subscribers, but every every day there's one or two, one or two, and it's adding up that way. So it's going to be about the content. What's the video itself? Do you have any calls to action within the description? This one doesn't have it that it says, don't forget to subscribe. It could. That may be a little bit more of a help. I might go in and add that in as well. You could also go in, which I think is much more intrusive. I'm not exactly sure how much it helps. But you've probably seen videos that it pops up all over the place. Subscribe. It pops up here. Don't forget to click here. And I think people are getting annoyed about that, that I'm trying to watch the video and something pops up that gets in my way. And there is a value to that, that as the video is going on, uh, I think I do have it in here on this video somewhere. As the video ends, it says, don't forget to watch our other video about part two. So it's right there. Click to vote on what to learn next. So that popped up. Hopefully not too intrusive. It's there. It's there for a little while. People click there, and that goes on to, okay, watch our other video. This one's got 193 video views about what do you want to learn next. It's clearly further away from that point. But then I also use here people that have commented. I also tell them, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. So there's the dialogue of social media. It's your content. It's your descriptions. It's your follow through. Because these are leads. You always try to apply to the comments as much as possible. Yes. As much as possible, try to respond because that's someone that it took the time because a like is so throwaway, so transition, tra transitory. Someone clicks like, moves on, what's next? 
but someone that took the time to write thanks for the video is it possible to do this then they're more invested so yes I will click and reply found them an answer put it on the link and then then they uh, say thanks Uh, ultimately always is to get the link back to your website. That's where you have the full control. I can't sell my services directly on YouTube. I can't have people do donate to uh, my nonprofit organization directly on YouTube. I can do all of that on my website. So really you always want to get them back to your website. But one possible step from that is I gotta like. Okay, then I gotta comment. That's more important. Then I got a subscriber. I can go look in my I can go look in my Creator Studio community, which will be empty here, subscribers, and all my subscribers will be listed here. More leads. I can then go to their channel, comment on their stuff, message them directly, and get that ball rolling to get them further to the ultimate conversion, which is come to Yeah. Every every network is like that. That's why McDonald's has a Twitter account and Chipotle and Nike, they've all got a way to reach the audience directly. And then as someone replies, someone tweets, I just had a I just had my first Big Mac of the new year. Well, McDonald's has filters going on searching every time the word Big Mac appears. Then there's a there's a there's a lead right there. So then they tweet to them and that could result in a new burger being sold. Any other uh, questions about the different topics we've brought up about YouTube? There's still a lot of nuances, but the, the big idea is you need a video. Follow the steps that I was talking about for views. It's still going to be about your content. If you don't have a very good video and you're still trying all of these tactics, it might not be resulting because you don't have good content explore these other things such as channel settings if you're interested in making money off of your YouTube videos you go to channel status and features and enable monetization monetization once you go through that little process there you could get you could make money off your videos the way that works is YouTube will put ads on your videos and when people click those ads, you will profit off of them. So every time you see those ads that you hate and that you skip, some people click on them because they are valuable. Maybe I do need video solutions, so I'll click on that. And then Code Geek got a little money from that. Or this one that popped up here, hired. One application, thousands of opportunities. I do need to put my application out there. I'll click on that. Code Geek gets a little bit off of that. How much? I can't exactly say. It's all part of the algorithm, but more views, more subscribers, more clicks, more profit from your videos. And again, that one there of that Visual Studio one, that Android one, that's earning us like 9 to $12 every month. And I haven't really done too much else with it. People have just been watching it, and that's pulling in a few dollars. <coughs> you can afford an extra latte a month. But the more you do this, the more views and hits and clicks, the more you can profit. So basically, we'll uh, we'll wrap up at this point. If uh, no more general questions, okay. So uh, YouTube is the next frontier of video, and uh, hopefully, I'll see your videos out there on YouTube, and it's resulting in good traffic for you. So. Uh, thank you for taking the class.